Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where each Tuesday, your host, Rick Says, gathers around the mic with outdoor industry entrepreneurs, brand leaders, founders, and enthusiasts to share stories from the backcountry, the startup files, and the retail aisles. Rick's guests offer actionable advice to land your ideal industry gig, grow your outdoor career, or plan your next big adventure. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. And now, here's Rick. Welcome back, everyone. This week on episode 346 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, I'm joined by Jenny Garner from Casper College in Wyoming. I met Jenny at the Outdoor Writers Association Conference there in Casper, and we had a little chat there, and then we caught up later to talk about all her great work there. We talk about her work-life history and how she got to Casper, all the great things going on in the tourism and recreation curriculum at Casper College, and if you want to work in tourism and or recreation, this is a must-listen. Welcome to the show, Ginny. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, this is great to talk to you. It was good to meet you at the OWAA conference. That was pretty fun. Did you guys get a lot of great contacts there? I'll bet you did. We did. We had a we had a great time, not only meeting all the amazing and talented content creators and writers, but even connecting with other with other convention and visitor bureaus around the state. I mean, right. excuse me, around the country and all the other vendors as well. It was just a it was a fun time. I'm, yeah. I'm glad we went. It's always a good event. I'm looking forward to Alabama next year. I haven't been I've been to Alabama once, so this will be a fun one. Oh yeah. And it's down at Gulf Shores. Yeah. So exactly. Right on the beach. Exactly. Well plenty of fun, fun things to do. Yeah. So you've been at Casper College for over nine years now. Tell us about getting started there. How'd you get involved with those guys? Yeah, this week was week one of year ten. Wow, so. congrats. Yeah, week one down. So <laughs> week one down. Yeah, I, I know you can kind of probably pick up a southern swing, but I have lived in Cass since 1990. Excuse me. I was a teenager. My parents moved up here for work from South Arkansas of all places. And I'm a I'm a high school graduate and believe it or not, a University of Wyoming graduate. And then after that, I stayed here for 10 years and worked in the hospitality industry and in healthcare. And then went back down to Arkansas and opened a conference center down there. Just wanted to make sure I didn't want to move back there permanently. And three years, and I was also working on my master's degree at the time. So after after about three years, I think I just needed to come back to Wyoming for all sorts of fun reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and and I had accepted a job back in healthcare. I really thought I was moving into healthcare administration. But uh, when I got to the position, I saw that it wasn't going to be as demanding as I thought. And I've always wanted to teach. It's really why I went to go get my master's. Either I wanted to teach or run a hospital. I know it's a weird thing, weird thing to think about. That makes sense. And I sent an email to the Dep- department chair of business and gave him a little bit of back my background. So I'd be interested in adjuncting if there was ever an opportunity. And he emailed me back and said they just closed a full-time position for a marketing and hospitality position. They're going to reopen it. And he wanted me to apply. And so a couple of weeks, a few weeks later, I had a teaching job and the stars aligned. And that's just how that happened. And I have never regretted it and love, still love every minute of it. That worked and out pretty good. Yeah. Now, don't tell my deans and vice president of academic affairs, I still love every minute of it because sometimes <laughs> it's good. Well, it's work. but So you're a Casper lifer. That's awesome. awesome. Sort of. Yeah. I've spent all of but, but about mm, 16 years of my 45 years here. So yeah, I, it feels like definitely feels like home. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet. Yeah. What are you doing these days? What's your role these days there? So I am still teaching. I'm still the marketing and hospitality instructor. I oversee the marketing program, the hospitality and tourism management program, and the outdoor rec and tourism management program. I'm also the academic chair for all the business programs. So I kind of oversee the administrative piece for all the business programs that we offer on campus. Wow, that sounds like a pretty busy job. What's a typical day look like? Or is there a typical day with all those different things? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this year I actually had to sit down and kind of set up a schedule just because not only do I have over 100 students, but I'm there now for about eight full-time faculty members plus adjuncts. So each day is different. My Tuesdays and Thursdays are very focused on students in the classroom. Those are my... Those are my face-to-face classes that I teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
Mondays and Fridays, I'm really focused a lot on my four online classes, which include which include recorded lectures, grading, all sorts of different things. And people would think that teaching online is actually fairly simple. It's actually a lot more work than the face-to-face classes. Oh, so, good, because you probably have to pre-create some of that stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, you pre-create yeah. all of it as a teacher, but online has to be digital. You've got to have a video component, I'm sure. That's that yeah. more work. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so we focus on that. And then on Wednesdays, really just kind of a break in the middle of the week, I really kind of focus on the administrative piece, not only taking care of some of the administrative piece on, as my AC role, but we also have a few, a couple of grants that we're working on over this, actually over this next year, coming down from the CARES money that has to be spent by the end of the year. So we're in the process of making sure those grants get spent properly and all the reporting's done correctly. So wow. yeah, I wear a handful of different hats. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Well, that makes the day go by quick, I bet, if you're doing a lot of different things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the day the days just fly by. Yeah. The days always... you're in the right profession when the days just fly by. That's true. That's true. Very well said. Yeah. Now don't no, don't get me wrong. I don't some days I don't rush to get there. But <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the, the... <laughs> but once I get but once I get started, they just fly by. That's very cool. So how long has the Outdoor Recreation and Tourism Program been in place? Is that pretty new? Yeah, it is. It's it's our newest program. We kicked that off right in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> well, you weren't uh, alone. A lot of people did that. <laughs> yeah, I think that went into the catalogs in 2020. Okay. And so obviously we didn't have a lot that first semester. We had a couple of students who were in hospitality and tourism that we knew the program was going to come up. So they were going to switch over. But during the pandemic, we just kind of, as most people did, we just put not really on autopilot, but we really had to focus on what was in front of us, making sure our current students and our current classes were meeting the goals that they needed to meet. However, we're seeing more and more over the past couple of years, we're seeing more and more interest in that. We're actually seeing a lot of interest from the people working in outdoor rec here in the community. So like our fishing guides, our hunting guides, our city and county employees, some of those frontline employees, this is something that's really attractive to them. And not only that, this program is a transfer, transfers to the University of Wyoming's Outdoor Rec and Tourism Management Program as well. So, and we actually designed this program to complement the university's program. So the student would really have the choice. Do they want to just, do they want to focus on the associate's degree and focus on the aspect of the associate's degree that means the most to them? Because it's a very dynamic degree. You can pick and choose a handful of different classes based on your interest. Or is it a, base for a bachelor to move on to that bachelor's program. Mm -hmm. It's great. I have a BS and an MA in outdoor recreation. It's been a great career. I mean, I enjoyed the education part of it. I originally was going to be either an engineer or architect and those classes were full, so I couldn't get into it and discovered recreation and never looked back. So it's it's a great degree. Yeah, and it's really nice because not only has our hospitality and tourism, but the outdoor rec and tourism has been supported here in the state by the last two, by the current and the last governor. So we, we have a lot of support from the top down. Our legislators are very supportive of this degree since tourism is Wyoming's second largest industry. So after a long time, after a while, we have just the Department of Tourism was really instrumental in helping the university get their programs up and running, which has really boosted all of our programs at the within the seven community colleges. That's very cool. uh, most of the seven community colleges either have a culinary, hospitality, outdoor rec leadership, or some sort of tourism based program. And we actually work really good as a team across the state, making sure that we are providing the programming that meets all of our students' needs. So that's pretty cool. I saw a course titled Out- Introduction to Outdoor Recreation Guide Outfitting. That sounds pretty fun. What are I mean, uh, That's got to be a popular that, one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that one, you should come. I mean, it's only a week long. That's, oh, that's man, I usually, should come to that. <laughs> it's only, it's taught, I think, over spring break, you learn how to pack a mule. Wow. I should go check that out. I could do that here, though. We have a lot of mule packers around Bishop. So yeah. I learn that here. The instructor is a retired ag instructor, and he still comes and teaches the class. He's beloved in the on on campus and really throughout the community. And he's like, Jenny, you need to come take the class. I said, Todd, 
the day that Jenny Garner packs a mule, something has gone drastically <laughs> wrong in society. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, it's a good thing. I've never learned it either. I've been on mules and packed in with mules, but it would be a good thing to learn, I think. <laughs> but my students love it, so I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds like a fun one. Do they do yeah. any other – is it only mule outfitting or do they, do, do they have river guide training and fly fishing guide training or some of that stuff too? So we, I am working with our PE department or physical activities department, I guess we should call it, on campus really to look at some of these different, these different trainings that, again, that aren't offered at, at any other community colleges. We did just reopen our fly fishing class this summer, and that was a big hit, actually filled up fairly quickly. It was a mini class or you know, it was a one credit class and they offered it between semesters, between the summer and the spring and summer semester. And the instructor was actually our, our medical lab director. Mm. <laughs> and he's just an avid, av- an avid fly fisherman and he loved it. And he's like, let's do two or three. And so yeah. we're pretty excited about that. So yeah, we're, it's a young program. We're continuing to really find our niche adding more some of these different trainings and and courses that really meet the needs of our community. I have a really good, yeah, I have a really good advisory board where I do bring in the hunting and fishing guides and um, and the hospitality and tourism group, including the state and county and city park and rec group as well. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of people helping me. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's a broad community to your recreation. I have two degrees, like I said, and I was a river guide for six years and worked at an outdoor camp. Those are the best years of my life. I mean, it was fantastic. Just great camaraderie with the staff and obviously whitewater guide. It was a blast, but it's just a, there's good degrees to have good, good to have in your tool belt, so to speak, if you go on. To yes. Recreation. Well, I've, Yes, I'm not going to learn how to pack a mule, but I have <laughs> spent plenty of money to float down the rivers and do all the fun things. There you go. Very good. Very good. <laughs> you many- remember my my background is in <laughs> my background is in sales and marketing of hospitality and tourism. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. No, you're perfectly yeah. suited to fill yeah. that role. Yeah. You're going to kill it. Yeah, I like it. How many yeah. students are in the program? Currently, we probably have around, oh, I haven't looked at the updated numbers, around 15 to 20. So we don't necessarily have a a huge amount of students. But again, we're actually seeing the interest in this outdoor rec, in this outdoor rec program really outweigh some of our other programs. And now that the pandemic and we're starting to see some of the Some of our visitor numbers rise and things are sort of getting back to normal. If if there's a normal to be back to. It's never going to happen again. Yeah. Well, the new normal that we're seeing more and more again. We're seeing more and more interest in the program. I'll bet it gets pretty popular. It gets the lifespan increases. It's uh, once people find out about it, I'm sure it'll blow up. Oh, yeah. What we're finding is that the education and really getting the information out to parents, parents, uh, for traditional age college students being like, yes, there is a very good career path f- for students who go into this industry. It's um, huge. Yes. I mean, the outdoor yeah. industry is a $800 billion plus business. So it's, there's a yeah. lot of different paths. I didn't realize that I would end up working for some of the brands that I ended up working when I got my rec degree. I thought I was going to be a guide yeah. my whole life. So you never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. And you, I mean, you can start as a guide. You may start yeah. in the fly shop yeah. or you may, yeah, you may work on the ski slopes in the winter and the beach in the summer. You, right. But however, there is a career path, not only in outdoor rec, but in hospitality that leads to pretty high paying careers. That's true. That yeah. will. And so I think some of that education, not only for parents, but for students, um, that's something we're looking statewide to make sure we're starting to implement that and reaching out to our high school instructors to, to, to introduce these, this, these industries as a career path, not just a summer job. Yeah, that's good because I remember <laughs> when I told my parents I was changing my major to outdoor recreation, it was the second time I thought I was going to get kicked out of the family, but yeah. it, would, it would have been good for them to know that, but uh, it worked out yeah. pretty good. Yeah, no, that's a good idea to, to get them involved early because they may not Yeah. Know. yeah. So yeah, even in the junior highs, even in the junior yeah, highs, those kind of right. career days and what are there, and it's there's lots of things to do. And if the outdoors are or where you love, just you can always make a career out of it if you want. 
And want. it's a wide variety. You could get a degree in outdoor rec and not necessarily work outdoors because we need the managers and the administrators and the executives and all those folks too. So, Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, if, you know, everything from private business to working right. for your state parks or national parks or mm-hmm. city parks. And that not only are those great paying jobs, those are great benefited Good paying benefits. jobs. That's true. Yeah, I missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a little break and give some love to our sponsor, Grammarly. If you write as much as I do, it's nice to have a little backup with the spelling and grammar, and I use Grammarly. Their instant grammar checker corrects all grammar errors and enhances your writing. To try it out, go to ricksays.com slash grammar check and get signed up today. You can thank me later. That's ricksays.com slash grammar check. Now back to the show. So what's living in Casper like? What do you love the most? So oh, I love Casper. Casper's about, oh, what's the po- Around 55,000 people mm-hmm. here in the city. And it's still a small town. It has that small town feel. If you lived here for 30 years, you can put put people, you can tell people who belong, who their mama is and their <laughs> siblings, the haunting arts. But, but the geography of it's really nice because we sit in this valley with a mountain to our south, believe it or not. The mountain is, people think the mountain's north, the mountain's south, where, you know, there's snow skiing and cross-country skiing and snowshoeing and snowmobiling and hiking. And there's the waterfalls are up there and all the camping and all the things to do on the mountain. You get off the mountain and then down through town is the river. So beautiful that's where river. the fly fish, beautiful river, yeah. yeah. That's where the fly fishing is. You could look down there on the weekend starting in probably July, and it's just nothing but people. It's world-class fly a, fishing. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, world-class, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people come out, come over from all over the world, really, to fly fish here on the North Platte. Celebrities like to come here as well in the whole nine yards. So, yeah. Do you have you a know, favorite activity? Fishing, Do you- well, I got a paddleboard this summer. Oh, cool. I got a paddleboard this summer and I'm not a fisherman, but I do like to get on. I mean, my Southern roots, I'm a water baby. Uh-huh. So whether you put me in front of the ocean or the lake or the river, I like to be on it and in it. And Perfect. So anytime you can get me on the water is where I like to be. We also, I'm also a yogi. So and in the summer, we do yoga by the river. Oh, at this, awesome. So we have these parks down by the river. There's this labyrinth, and that's where that's where the yoga. And they do hiking yoga on the mountain, mm. all sorts of fun things. So, yeah. And that doesn't include all the festivals. We have something in this community, it seems like every weekend, I think. <laughs> where there's concerts. There's free concerts downtown. Last Friday, they were showing Finding Nemo oh, wow. <laughs> for the kids. Cool. There's taco festivals and chicken wing festivals and wow. all sorts of things. That's <laughs> just, cool. There's, yeah, there's always something to do. There's always, even even as the weather cools off a little bit, we just move all of that indoors. So. It gets pretty darn cold there in the winter. Eh, sometimes <laughs> it can get... Sometimes it can get below zero. It doesn't necessarily stay there, but you know, it gets it, it pretty. It's pretty cool. So, but no humidity. So it's not oh, like right. we're up in northern Minnesota, where not only is it cold, but we've got all this humidity um, on top of it. So it's a dry cold. So it's bearable. Yeah, that's right. I don't, yeah. yeah, and you guys have a nice yeah. ski area too. We we when we were there with the outdoor riders group, we had a dinner up there at the, or maybe it was a. Happy. No, it was dinner up there at the skier. That yeah. was a beautiful skier. Oh, yeah, it was CJ Box. Yeah. Yeah, CJ um, Box. Ho- right, right. The yeah. writer. Yeah. Um, Hogadon, yeah. Actually, Hogadon is considered one of our city parks. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. So there's a handful of runs. I think there's like 20 something runs up there. They just built a beautiful, that's where you guys had dinner in the new lodge. Beautiful. And. People come to town to go ski on the mountain. Actually, a ton of locals spend a lot of time up there. Yeah, and it's just, it's fun to have in your backyard. You can go up there, ski, have, eat, have a fun, fun afternoon, and then come home, take a shower, and stay in your own bed. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's kind of what we did. We ended up there, had a great dinner, and listened to CJ tell a couple stories, and it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. And it's not going to cost, and it's not going to, if you own your own skis, even if you don't own your own skis, but if you have either rent skis or buy a day pass up there, you're still, you're still going to spend way less than you would at any other ski resort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of Wyoming. It's a lot of things are reasonably priced, unlike yeah. California these days. <laughs> yeah. It's a great place if you want to learn how to ski or you're just interested in it and you don't want to have all the crowds. Come to Casper. There you go. Right. <laughs> Come to Casper. And do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into outdoor rec? What path would you suggest they 
take. Yeah. If you're interested, and we not only do we talk about this, especially to students and outdoor rec and tourism and hospitality and tourism, but really with all of our, especially business programs, but especially with these two industries is Start working, get the, get in the job. If it's a lifeguard for your city pools, is it working at the fly shop or cleaning for a guide? Is it cleaning up campgrounds for your county parks or state parks? Just get into the industry of what interests you. And then if it interests you, let your supervisors know because the work experience has to be combined with the education. You can have the education. The employers also, especially here in our state, want you to have the work experience as well. And with the work experience, then they also want you to have the education. It gives an employer just a really good view of you have a work ethic, you can meet deadlines, you can um, you can manage your time correctly, and hopefully you learned a few concepts out right. of those college Show classes. Show up on time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, how did we teach you how to deal with how to deal with with angry customers, things of that nature? So that would be my biggest suggestion is just to, especially for young people, is to when you start looking at summer jobs or part time jobs, if that is something that interests you, there is always something in your community available in the outdoor rec right. area. No, that's very true. And do you have internship programs with some of the local outfitters and stuff? Yeah, we do. We at this point, like I said, it's still a new program. We don't necessarily have anything official. We're actually working with the university to and I believe all of the community colleges to make sure our internship requirements are aligned. Mm. But yeah, we I spend a good amount of time fielding internship and job op- opportunities to my <laughs> students. I'll bet. <laughs> and that, and we do require that outdoor rec and hospitality and management students do have a, they do have a mandatory um, internship requirement. Because if you don't want to work in the industry or you don't like the industry or you have no interest in working in the industry, you really, you know what, it doesn't make sense for you to spend your money to get an education yeah, in the right. industry. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes sense. Um, I had an internship program. It was great. I read out of college. And I yeah. worked at an outdoor camp, and that's how I got plugged into everything. So that's a good Well, yeah. yeah, I found out some point in college that you could go, or maybe, yeah, some point in college that you could go work at Disney World. <laughs> so yeah. I did my college internship down in Orlando at the most magical place on earth. There so, <laughs> yeah, if you come in my office, you'll see my collection of Minnie Mouse ears on the wall. So, oh, very cool. Yeah, and we still send students to Disney. We also have... Um, a good relationship with the national park with Teton and Yellowstone. If students want to go work up in the parks for the summer or the season, really. So yeah, we have lots of opportunities, but yeah. In Wyoming, I just wanted to share some of this. Why believe it or not, Wyoming has in 2021, right after pandemic had over 8 million visitors, Wow! but for at the end of July, at the end of July. So we still have what, I don't know. We still have five months left of the year. We're already trending over. We have already hosted over 10 and a half million visitors in the state. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And that's with Yellowstone having some closing a little bit earlier this summer due to the flooding. Yeah. Our visitors spend over $4 billion here in the state. We we employ over thirty thousand employees, which doesn't maybe not sound a lot, but we're the least populated state in the yeah right in the country. Right. Yeah, and they earn over a billion dollars. Man, maybe I'll and move we, out there. Yeah. So <laughs> if the thing about I love about Casper, what I love about Wyoming is what whatever industry you want to get in, if you want to make a career out of it, if you want to move up. Uh, in the or in an organization or up in your community, students especially have the ability, and young people have the ability to do that. You just have to let people know, and when you let people know, they'll help you do it. It's a beautiful state. I've been there many times to Tetons, Yellowstone, and now Casper, and every place that I've been to, it's just gorgeous. And I think the, all the outdoor rec, like you say, all the outdoor, not only outdoor rec, but hospitality and tourism, just tremendous opportunities for people to go work and live. And what a great place! So. Yeah, I you know what? My parents brought me here in 1990. Um, I was going to be in seventh grade, kicking and screaming, <laughs> and I said I was moving back as soon as I could. It I worked. Tried to, <laughs> and you see where I'm sitting. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. <laughs> yep, yep, that's awesome. Good for you. Let's. And I uh, love it. 
Yeah, it's like I say, I've been there a bunch of times, and it's just so so beautiful and so much fun, and people are great. So it's an awesome place. Well, what I tell people, I come from the south with the southern hospitality mm-hmm. people in Casper, and I, I I'll put money on it. People in Casper and people across Wyoming are the nicest people you will meet. They're just genuinely nice. Now they're not going to ask about your mama, but they're just genuinely nice to you. Yeah. And customer service, I think, is compared to some of the customer service I've had elsewhere, is pre- we're still working on it. We're a work in progress, but is still still usually pretty very fairly positive. Yep. Yep. No, it's a great state. Let's. Uh, I'm going to shift gears and go to my lightning round now. Some fun questions as we wrap up here. What's your favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? Oh. Yeah. Anything safety related. No, interesting. <laughs> Anything okay. safety related. Uh-huh. Make sure you have a really good bike helmet. Make sure you, which can be over a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have a you have a really good, really good life jacket. <laughs> make sure make sure you have all of your first aid kits. Make sure you have all of these small things good. That, that keep you safe. That. Yeah. That keep you safe, that get you home. Make sure that you bear spray right. the bells, the things that you know, all the things that keep you safe to get you home safely so you can continue to enjoy the outdoors. <laughs> That's so. awesome. I love that. That's a great answer. To especially that question. especially the helmets. Yeah, bike <laughs> the helmets, helmets are key. and the life yep. helmets, ski helmets, <laughs> life jackets, wear your seatbelt, don't drink and drive, the holding guards. <laughs> all that stuff. Yep. And yeah. Well, you, this is the teacher coming out. This is a mama bear teacher gotcha, coming gotcha. out. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> How about uh, some of your favorite books? Are you a big reader? Oh, uh, I am. You know what? And I'm not a, actually a big fiction reader, but I love nonfiction. I got turned on to Parker Palmer Palmer during grad school. We read a handful of his books. They're talking about the courage to teach that was the big one. And it talks about being an educator. But we read it with the lens of being a leader. And how do you kind of, how do you develop yourself? And you can't help develop other people unless you have developed yourself. And I just really love his work. Really kind of fall back to it as much as I can. The the hospitality person of the Disney girl and me really loves Lee Cockrell's work. He was a vice president of operations down in Orlando. And he has this amazing book called Creating the Magic. It makes students read that book. They love it. So that's actually one of my go-tos. Cool. The, yo- the yogi in me really likes, and this is a great this is a great book too, is Stephen Cope's The Great Work of Your Life, the ga- the guide for the journey of your true calling. So I, this I read this little sucker. I'm actually holding it right now. It's like 200, 250 pages, something like that. I, I don't think I got up to even go to the restroom. Yeah, wow, that's that good. Okay, we'll link to all of yeah. the show notes. That's awesome. I'll yeah, check those and out. then and then I'm also just a big fan of Desmond Tutu. So no future without forgiveness. The Book of Joy. Anytime you can get your hands on a book written by the late great. Desmond Tutu, you will not be disappointed. So good ones, all so, good ones to add to the library. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm not a I'm not a huge fiction reader, but this is these are kind of the books that keep me going, and I'm able to uh, apply the knowledge I learn in there in life and in the classroom. And yeah, I'm the same fight. way. I read books like that too. I read books that I can a they're inspirational, and b you can always learn something and apply it to your daily life or whatever. That's yeah. Good. As we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Well, if you want any more information on our programs, not only our outdoor rec and our hospitality management, any of our business or any of our programs that are offered at Casper College, we are a small community college right here in the middle of Wyoming. We have on-campus living. We have a vibrant student life, athletics, and award-winning forensics team. You can find that at casperchallege.edu. You're more than welcome to reach out to me at Garner at caspercollege.edu if you have any questions. I'd love to show you around. So if you come to Casper, let me know. I, I can be the hostess with the mostess, even though I'm, even though that's not my official title. <laughs> you can pull community. it off. <laughs> I can pull it off. And if I don't, and if I can't find it, I know who the hostesses with the mostesses are. In there town, you go. So that's, right. I, that's right. I know those girls yeah. and guys actually. Yeah. So yeah, we, and we're, we're really inexpensive. We actually were a great deal. Wyoming has some of the lowest tuition. The university and the community colleges have the lowest tuition in the country. And we offer a handful of online degrees. So you don't have to leave. If you're out of state, you wouldn't have to leave home, including the outdoor rec uh, cool. and tourism and the hospitality and tourism management programs are both 
can be done 100 percent online in the comfort of your own hometown perfect perfect well i'm a huge proponent of outdoor rec degrees i've got two of them and they've served me well over the years and helped me get into my outdoor career so go get your degree in wyoming be a great place yeah it's a great deal you'll meet a lot of fun people and even if you don't get out here, you'll get to interact. We do a lot of service learning. So you'll get to interact not only with your classmates, with the professionals here in the community and around the state as well. So Perfect. Well, thanks, Jenny. It's been great talking to you. I look, I'm happy to meet you and look forward to seeing you again in Wyoming sometime. All righty. I look forward to it. All right. Have a good day. Okay. You too. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Be sure to visit our website, theoutdoorbizpodcast.com, where you'll find show notes with links to everything we talked about and more. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or spread the word and tell a friend about the show. That would really help us out, too. Be sure to tune in every week. And thanks again for listening to the Outdoor Biz Podcast with Rick Sayes. 